Yo, what is up, everybody? Denny Tice is entering New Orleans Arena for potentially the last time to play a home game in his career. And we're playing against the Detroit Pistons today. As you see, we started the season 3-0. and And why I say the final time? Because, as you guys may or may not know, Denny Tice filed a trade request. And this might be the last home game I play before I do it. And you see, I'm playing with guys like Eric Gordon, Anthony Davis, for potentially the last time in my career. And what a fitting way to go out than playing against the Detroit Pistons. For whatever reason, we have quite... Oh my god, Henry. Hen I have to interrupt the commentary because Henry just threw it down over somebody. I mean, like, I, I never seen this side of Henry in my life, man. Last game I play and all of a sudden Henry's just going off? What? And look at Denny leaking out on the break, going all the way and in. But, um, yeah, we're playing against the Pistons, and the Pistons always give us trouble. You guys remember last season, we played two overtime games, or only two over guy overtime games of the season, both against the Pistons. And, um, we came really close to losing both of them. Thankfully, we came out on them, but, um, I don't know, they just always seem to give us trouble. Look at Iggy playing beat the buzzer real quick and knocking it down with .3 seconds left. Here, Eric Gordon in transition, but oh my god, someone just swatted that ball way out of bounds. And um, as you see, the quarters are still 12-minute quarter length, if you've been paying attention. But um, I, I'm going to do 8-minute quarters, but I played some of these games before I um, asked you guys the question. So, um, like this video and the next video, you'll see I'm playing 12-minute quarter games, but... After that, it's going to be 8-minute quarter games because um they just go by faster. And they're pretty enjoyable, 8-minute quarter games. They just go by faster and, you know, you're having fun. But um anyways, um I'm going to miss this team, man. I'm going to miss this team, all right? Let me just say that real quick. I mean, we just have a beast-ass team, and, you know, it's mad cool. I didn't ask for a trade. You know, a lot of people like asking for trades, but I got drafted into a good situation in New Orleans. So I didn't have any reason to ask for a trade on like my first five games of the season. I stuck it out with Anthony Davis, stuck it out with Eric Gordon, and slowly but surely, the GM just built the team around me. And you gotta love that, man. Look at Eric Gordon throwing the lob there. Like, okay, EG, I see you. But um, yeah, they just built the team around me. You know, besides getting rid of Ryan Anderson, which was a huge asset, three-point shooter. And I just need a team of shooters around me. So losing Anderson was tough, but Ed Davis brought some defense that we needed. We needed some defense, and, you know, you can only play so much defense in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, he did bring some defense. He led the team in blocks last season after that trade. And um, we brought in Brandon Bass. We flipped Reeves Vasquez for Brandon Bass. That was probably the biggest move, as you guys saw in Game 2 of the NBA Finals. That won us game two of the NBA Finals pretty much that Brandon Bass trade and look at Eric Gordon knocking down threes of course Eric Gordon stayed and the biggest acquisition was Andre Iguodala in free agency and Iggy's a great player in real life but in 2k he's even better as I throw it off of um, Monroe's back like an idiot but um yeah Iggy's an even better player in 2k he knocks down uh, he knocks down a lot of his three-point shots whenever he takes them he doesn't take them that often but when he does he knocks them down he's a beast finishing in the paint his only his one true weakness is a free throw shooting. He's like a 67% free throw shooter. He makes like two out of every three, which is not a good clip. But besides that, he's a monster. And I can live with the free throw shooting for all the other stuff he does well. And Anthony Davis has developed his game for sure. Look at Iggy playing beat the buzzer again from three-point range this time. Let's go, Iggy. Seven-point lead heading to the fourth quarter. But... When I come back in, it's a three-point lead. So hold up before I say my goodbyes real quick. Let's just get let's just get the ball rolling here. We gotta make sure we win. It would be a shame if I lost my last game as a Hornet after we went on this tremendous winning streak. And look at Stucky trying to post me up. That's not gonna go. Starting the fast break, I'm looking for Eric. I'm looking at Iggy. I hit Iggy, and Iggy hop steps it into the paint and knocks down the jump shot. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's an 11 or nine-point game, I should say. Actually, no. Now it's an 11-point game. It's Eric Gordon finished. Finishes that layup in the paint. They are throw a dangerous pass to Iguodala who kicks it back to Denny. And Denny knocks down a three. Denny came off that bench in the fourth quarter and just sparked the team on a huge run. And he had a beautiful bounce pass, but Ed Davis can't finish it. But um that pretty much puts this game away as Brandon Knight shows his hops there. So um back to the goodbyes real quick because like I said, they just built a perfect team around me. And one of the unique things about our team is we had so much shooting big men. Um, Robin Lopez, our center, took mid-range shots. Anthony Davis grew a pretty respectable mid-range shot in his second season. Um, Jason Smith had, like, an unbeatable shot. He would knock it down almost every time. Warwick had a jump shot. Of course, Brandon Bass, who we traded for, he had a jump shot. So, I mean, all these shooting big men on the team, Ed Davis wasn't that great with it. But every once in a while, he would knock it down. But 
They just built a perfect team around me as a pass first point guard and just let me have so much fun with it, you know? I averaged like a ton of assists in my second season just because I had so much fun. You guys, I could score more if I wanted to, trust me, but I just have so much fun passing it. 30 assist games like this, this is the kind of stuff I love playing. I'm different than everybody else. I'm wired differently, I guess, but that's just the way I love playing. So, you know, I salute New Orleans, but I'm out to the press conference. Word gets around, man. But if that's the biggest piece of news you've gotten out of the rumor mill, then you're seriously missing out. I got some really good inside info that I'm sure you'd love to hear. Except I'm not one to be spreading rumors, so, you know, you'll just have to find it out for yourself. Just know it ain't got nothing to do with me, all right? You know what, man? I'm gonna miss this. You know what? I love this team too much, all right? We have the best team, and... I can't ask for a trade, all right? We stuck with each other for two seasons. I feel like we could go for three. Go for the three P. Ended on top, so I'm going to rescind my trade, all right? I, I'm sorry, guys. I just love New Orleans. I love the team we have. It's just such a fun team to play with. So um, I'm going to the GM, but the GM actually calls me to his office before I can even say anything. So let's see what's up real quick. So some good news. I was able to grant your request for a trade. Effectively, oh. immediately, you're a member of the Sacramento Kings. The Kings? I appreciate your service here with us. I think you're a tremendous talent, and I'd love to have you back here someday. Good luck out there. Thanks, man. It means a lot for you to say that. You've always done right by me, and I won't forget that. I definitely wish you and the team the best of luck going forward, man. All right, take care. Wow, so out of nowhere, I'm on the Sacramento Kings. Not the Knicks, not the Magic, not the Mavs, the Kings, as you see the trade here. So, out of nowhere, I'm in Sacramento tonight playing against the Chicago Bulls as my first game as the Sacramento King. Who saw this coming? Are you looking money? Never easy for a player being traded, but they made him feel very welcome with the billboard they put up for him. It may help ease his transition to the new team a bit and with the statement they made the fans can't help but be fired up about this move yeah but it might put a little pressure on it too i mean all of a sudden you arrive in your new town and there's your picture up on a billboard these fans are expecting big things here okay i swear to god i was going to the gm and i was rescinding my trade request after the pistons game but the GM beat me to the punch there, and I'm a Sacramento King now because of that. And the word leaked out in the street that I was going to rescind my trade. So the people in Sacramento aren't exactly looking at me as a savior. They know that I was planning on staying in New Orleans. So they're a little bit skeptical, even though you hear about the billboard. That's just management trying to make things good. But um, I got to make things right with these fans. I got to make things right with my new teammates. And the best way to do that is to win and to show... How great of a player you are on the court. And then he decided to do that in this first quarter. He decided to show Sacramento who they got exactly. And now all of a sudden, new team, new surroundings. Never been in a different city like this before. Never been on a different team. I've been a Hornet all my life. And now, I'm with all these guys. And this team is not as good as the Hornets. Let me put it just, just straight up. It's, they're not as good as the Hornets. But... They're a decent team. They were the 8th seed last season. If you remember, we played them in the first round of the Western Conference quarterfinals. So they're not that bad, you know? They're headlined by Tyreek Evans, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Because Tyreek Evans is pretty good, but Tyreek Evans might be the worst superstar player in 2K. <laughs> so, right? Oh, like, he cannot make a jump shot. That's his thing. He cannot. Oh, look at Denny Tice going. Oh, no. Heat check. Okay. Okay, Danny, calm down. So, um, anyways, now I'm a Sacramento King, and you look around the team, and it's not that bad of a team. Though, the thing is, we have Tyree Evans on the team. That's the worst part. Our second best player is Tyree Evans, and I'm not too happy about that. So, I mean, if DeMarcus Cousins was second best player, and they, um, the Hornets picked up Tyree Evans, that would have been one thing, but we have Tyree, and, you know, we got to work with that. Our third best player is probably either Marcus Thornton or Thomas Robinson. So I'm trying I'm just trying to learn the players right now, you know, and I decided this first game I was gonna score a little bit early because I knew I had to get acquainted with my teammates. I didn't do any practice sessions or anything. I just hopped into the game and decided let me get acquainted with my team here. And so far so good. We're blowing out the um bulls. Though that's more of the fact that the Bulls were not playing so good on offense. And the fact that I probably played my best defensive like individual um defensive game of my career. I mean I locked down Derrick Rose for the most part. 
And if you play Hall of Fame, you know, it's god near impossible to guard people. I'm not a lot to defender myself. But I mean, I think I'm all right, but it's pretty much like shit like this happens all the time where people just jump in your face and knock it down. You get good defense, but it only means so much. And look at Shane Patty, you're knocking that down. I could get used to that. I could get used to that. But um, for the most part, I was on D-Rose, and this play was just like, that was the icing on the cake. That was pretty much like the highlight. And that's just said what kind of night it was for D Rose. I had him rattled. I had him rattled like I never rattled a superstar point guard like that before. And look at Marcus Thornton. If Marcus Thornton is doing stuff like this. I'm gonna have fun in Sacramento. These are my New Orleans Hornets, but we can make it work. We can make it work. Though um, this game might be a fluke though. This game might be a fluke. All right, we might be uh, blowing them out, but when we play a team that's more offensively equipped than the Bulls. You know, we'll see what happens, you know, I doubt we're gonna, I, I highly, highly, highly doubt, I'm pretty damn sure we're gonna lose games, alright, we're gonna lose games trying to get acquainted with each other, that's just the process of getting traded and all that, I'm, I'm ready to lose some games, unfortunately, I don't want it to happen, but I'm pretty sure it will happen, so, you know, that will happen, but in the meantime, I just got knocked down here, and I'm going to the line for three free throws, and they're chanting MVP, my first game as a king, there might have been a little bit of animosity, but in the end, they're cheering MVP in my first game here, so I think I, I think I got them. I think I won them over, man. I think I won them over. Had a really good game, 27 assists with a bunch of guys I never played with before in my life, so I think that's pretty good. So, um, I'm going to have another video coming out later today. Yes, two Denny Tice videos in one day. Just to show you these new Sacramento Kings show us balling out. I know you guys want to see us play. I'll give you guys a breakdown on our team. Breakdown on Tyreek. Breakdown on Jimmer. Teach me how to Jimmer real quick. That'll wrap this one up, bro. <laughs> like, okay, Jimmer. That was that really was the icing on the cake in this game here. So, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later today with a game. I think it's against the Lakers. So, I'll give you guys the breakdown of the team. And hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe for more. And I will catch you guys next time with more Denny Tice.